Good evening and welcome. My name is Scott Rulon. I'm a CPA in the state of Arizona and a financial advisor uh, located at 59th Avenue in Union Hills and have been in business in the state of Arizona for about 32 years now. Um, I bet we're all excited that the election is over. Certainly we don't know all of the results yet, um, but whether you're happy or sad about the election, I have good news for you. We're gonna get you on the right track when it comes to your retirement. And that's exciting. So for those of you that will have to leave a little bit early, um, I just wanted to leave you with my phone number, which is 602-824-2299 and my email address, scott at rulonfinancial.com. So if you have any questions in the future, you can feel free to give us a call or give us an email um, whenever you're ready. I mean, I'm really excited about talking about income planning is because as we look at our lives, you know, everything we do in our lives is affected by income and finances, how we pay our bills, how we pay for weddings, how we buy our groceries. And we all want to know that we have security and retirement, no matter who gets elected, whether Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, doesn't really matter. We want to help you plan for the future and plan in the right way. Um, by way of introduction, um, here's my wife, Lisa. This is a picture was taken when we were over at Medieval Times before all the COVID hit. Um, I'm also a father of a college junior at GCU. Uh, my son is studying mechanical engineering and is definitely on the right track. We're, we're so excited that next year he's actually going to graduate and find a job. So what, what a great thing is that. So as we move forward, let's talk a little bit about how to build a retirement recovery plan that protects your money from a crisis. So certainly there are different crises at different times, you know, 2008, 2002, um, all kinds of things, but we wanna set up a plan that helps protect us in the future. So another title I usually have for this is how to go into retirement without going broke. We certainly don't want to run out of money before we pass away. And so I'm excited to talk about this tonight. So our goal of this presentation is show you the only way to have a successful retirement and the five critical steps you must do to protect it. Please be advised that the information provided here is provided by a licensed professional. I am both security insurance and CPA license in the state of Arizona. Remember this is educational material, so it should not be construed as provided for any specific person um, to get specific information. Um, you'll want to call me directly so we can help you with that. And so with that, let's continue forward. So remember those days when you're in college or in an apartment complex or in your business, or at the place that you work and you looked up on the bulletin board and we saw all kinds of variety of things, you know, where we could live, who needed a roommate and stuff of, of that nature. But today, as we're looking forward to our retirement, we're getting a little bit confused because there's too many things going on at once, just like if we were looking at that bulletin board. But this is probably one of the single most important things you can do in your life to help make sure you have a safe, secure retirement. So not too long ago, remember back in March when the stock market went down 30%, um, there were a lot of people that were really nervous at that time. Um, this is an iconic picture of a stockbroker down the floor of the, the New York Stock Exchange on the day that the nation knew it had um, coronavirus and coronavirus was growing. Um, who wants to be that person who doesn't have any money left over um, when the stock market has crashed? Because we never know when it's gonna go up. We never know when it's gonna go down, but we do know we have to plan for the future. So I gathered this picture just so we could see a picture of what many people felt like on March 24th when the stock market went down 30%. So if you remember when we talked to our parents, um, they had a slightly different type of retirement than we do. Uh, 
this was the traditional retirement model. Um, it provided a pension. So if you work for the government or big employer, um, they would provide um, pension money to you. Um, we also had social security and, and if we wanted some extras, we also had savings. So we had a base level of protected income. The majority of the risk was on the employer that we worked for. And with our savings, we had the ability to earn some assets and a rate of return. But the important thing here is that um, the majority of the risk was the on the employer that we worked for. Unfortunately, that model has been completely broken today. Um, you know, what that really did for us is we had these things called 401ks and 403bs and 457s and IRAs and Roth IRAs. But what it really came down to is the majority of the risk was on you. And you only had a small amount of protected income. And that came from, you got it, Social Security. So as we move forward, we know that we have a variety of choices. If we look on the internet, there's all kinds of people and gurus trying to talk to us about um, what's going to happen to retirement. You know, I have the right idea. You don't have the right idea. It all got very confusing, just like that bulletin board we saw earlier. So anybody remember this old commercial from ING? What's your number? Well, this was a number you know, based on what we thought we would need to retire on. And certainly the banks and the financial institutions certainly had a reason for, for giving us this, but I'm not sure their reason was always the best for us. It wasn't always really about walking around and having a big number. And, you know, on TV today and on the radio, most of you know this guy. Yeah, you got it. It's Dave Ramsey, really famous for having a big pair of scissors and cutting up credit cards. Um, so we might get advice from him. And then who knows this guy? No Kramer, when he hit that thing, he had that bullhorn and that beeper and everything else to pick the right stock. This is the right one. This one is not. Let's see what we can do in the future to pick the right one. But the point is, it all got really confusing. And what I really want people to know today is, you know, as put in these articles, retirees might run up out of money 10 years before they die. Americans do not really have enough to retire, really. Um, we want to make sure that this epidemic that has happened in our nation doesn't go forward forever. So I want to all want to give you the tools and the power to go forward and live a pleasant and safe retirement. In any retirement, we really have four major risks. We have longevity risk, the, and that's the risk that we might run out of money before we pass away. We have the stock market risk, you know, that's volatility in the stock market. We never know when it's going to go up, and we never know when it's going to go down. We also have inflation risk. In my old economics classes, we used to call that purchasing power parity. That just goes to show you that a dollar today doesn't buy what it might in the future. And so it's important to save today and have something to keep up with inflation. And that last thing, which most retirees don't recognize, is you're going to be paying some income taxes in retirement, probably far more than you ever thought. So let's move forward and let's talk about some of this stuff. The only way I believe for successful retirement is through an income plan that protects your money from four key risks. We call this the retirement income framework. And so we want you to know that when you spend in retirement that you can spend confidently regardless of what the economy is, regardless of who's president and who's senator, we want you to be able to have a budget to spend regardless of what's happening in the world. Whether you wanna spend it on your grandkids, having a nice vacation, going to Italy to see the Vatican, having a nice hobby like photography or whatever is your choice, 
or having a nice dinner on the beach at an exotic location. We want you to feel confident in the way that you get to spend your money in retirement. So tonight we're gonna to talk about the retirement income framework. It is a five-step proprietary process that increases an income plan on protecting your money from four key retirement risks. So the first part in the process, we call that identify and then protect, and then minimizing our taxes and investing our surplus to grow assets and how we manage that money on a regular basis. So obviously we wanna talk about identify first, determine our current financial status. How many of you have walked into your kitchen, you pull open that drunk drawer and you've got all kinds of stuff in there. You know, I have one of these and you know, certainly everything in this junk drawer is an absolutely useful tool, whether it be sunglasses, a stapler, earbuds, keys to unlock the front door. Certainly all these are wonderful things to have, but they need to be organized so you know how to use them. Like this junk drawer, many of you out there have a retirement junk drawer. We have social security in there. We might have life insurance, IRAs, 403Bs, 401Ks, and savings. But many of us do not know how to use them when it comes to retirement. So what we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to do that. Um, I know many of you have never heard of Robert Merton. But what you should know is he has a, a, won the Nobel Laureate Prize in Economic Sciences. So this is actually an article from Harvard Business Review. And this is Robert Merton talking about what's happening in retirement. There's a true crisis in retirement planning. But what I really want you to do is focus on that middle line there. Our approach to savings is all wrong. We need to think about monthly income, not net worth. What does that mean, monthly income? Well, sometimes I call that mailbox money. That money, that is money that's coming in month after month, just like Social Security, so you can spend confidently regardless of any economy. So again, for those of you that may have to leave a little early, I just wanted to put up my name and my number and my email address. So you have them. I'll give you a couple more times before the end. You can write that stuff down. But please feel free to call and ask any questions. So what do I need in my retirement? And what do I want in my retirement? Well, so really what we have, we have two things. We have our essentials bucket and we have our discretionary bucket. So remember when we were at the grocery store with our mom or dad as we were growing up and we wanted a candy bar and said, mom, I really want that. And your mom would say, it's not healthy for you. <laughs> this is one of those areas that the candy bar really was more of a want than it was a need. Um, so mom was enthusiastic about providing the right meal to us. And if she was in a good mood, sometimes we got that candy bar, sometimes we didn't. So I want to give you a hypothetical example of what might happen in retirement. Um, so what we do is we put together a flexible spending plan for our essentials. And let's just pretend it's $5,000 per month. And our discretionary or want income is about $2,000 per month. So what we want to do is we want to label that essential expense um, our protected income number. Did you hear that? Our protected income number. This is the amount of mailbox money that we want to receive each and every month, regardless of who's president, who's senator, whether the economy's up, whether the economy's down, we all want to be able to have extensive money in retirement. So I saw a hand raised here. Um, what I'm going to do, um, let's wait till after the presentation and we'll go ahead and answer that. So as we move forward, we've looked at identify. So we've looked at our financial junk drawer. 
The next thing we wanna know is how do we protect that income? So that comes in each and every month. Well, here's a recent article from Time Magazine. It said securing at least a base level of lifetime income should be every retiree's priority, at least if they want to live happily ever after. How many of us really thought about that? When we think about, you know, our life, do you notice those times when you get a little angry and nervous? What's those times when we don't have the income that we need? And I think if we at least have a base level of income, uh, we tend to be a little bit more happier because we can pay our bills, buy our groceries, spend time with our grandkids. So I wanted to give you an example here. So I had some friends recently came down from the Northeast. They had always wanted to visit Death Valley. So remember Death Valley, that really low place in California, the lowest place below sea level here, and those really screaming hot high temperatures there? Well, as we were traveling down the road into Death Valley, um, all of a sudden as I was driving, I noticed that my tank only had a quarter tank of gas. And a couple feet later, we noticed the sign, next gas services, you got it, 100 miles. So people in the car were just going crazy. You know, one of them said, you need to speed up and let's just coast down the hill to the next place. Um, the other person said, wow, we better slow down. Um, if we take it a little bit slower, we can preserve that tank of gas. Um, but I want you to think of retirement in very much the same way. We want to have a quarter tank of gas that maintains forever, no matter what the environment is, whether it's uphill or whether it's downhill. Now, average length of retirement. Have any of you really thought about how long we might live into retirement? You know, the average male lives about 18 years, average female about 20. If you are a couple, you know, you can expect to live about 24 years in retirement. And I've even seen some recent white papers from Fidelity that suggested at least one of you has a 50% chance of living well into your 90s. So as we're living in retirement, you know, we could live in retirement as long as we lived in our working lives. Isn't that crazy? So we need to make sure we take great care as we're headed towards retirement. So let's talk about the protected income definition. If we have protected income, we know it's guaranteed for life. It's backed by a government or a financial institution. It increases over time with inflation and it increases each year you choose not to start income. Those are all very important aspects when it comes to retirement. So let's talk about the three sources of protected income. Pensions, Social Security, and annuities. Well, certainly pensions are important. They were really important for our parents. Unfortunately, today, only about 4% of us actually have pensions. And so they're not always something we can rely on. If you're lucky enough to work for a city or state or university, government, there's still some pensions in there, but those are starting to hurt. But um, you know, since 1980s, pensions are down about 60%. So Social Security, we certainly all know about that. And you know, I used to ask that question, when is the right time to retire? Most people would raise their hand and they'd say, when you're 65. Well, not really. We can retire when we have enough money and income to retire not necessarily based on an age. And the third thing is called an annuity and we will go over those as well. So let's talk about social security first. Um, some of you may know, some of you may not know that in social security, you can first apply for social security at age 62. Now that's called early social security. And if you chose to go this direction, um, you'll only be able to earn um, about $18,000 in earned income. And for each dollar over $18,000, the government, for each $2 over, the government will take away $1 in benefits. If you're willing to wait a little bit longer until this thing called FRA, that stands for full retirement age, 
um, you can certainly get a, get a bit more and you can also earn and work as much as you want to without having to give up some of your social security income. So as we move forward, some of you, you might choose to take your social security later. And so many of us, when social security first started out, we could start at 65, then it moved up to 66. In fact, even with my own social security, I can't start taking it until age 67, believe it or not. But for those of you who are willing to wait, um, Social Security will give you an extra bonus of about 8% per year for each year you're willing to go forward until age 70. Now, while not the right thing for everybody, it might be the right thing for some of you. Social Security certainly offers inflation protection. Now, certainly they don't do this every year, um, but only when the government deems it's necessary. But the one thing that I've kind of seen with this, you know, they offer that cost of living protection, but by the time you get that little raise, it seems like the Medicare takes up the raise that you got. So maybe not as great a deal after all, but certainly a great source of income as we approach our retirement. So let's kind of show this on a graph, and this is no particular person. Um, if we look at the gray area, this is a person that retired at age 62, and they had, um, they would receive about $864,608. Um, if they waited till full retirement age, then this blue section, dark blue section, they'd get a little bit more. And for those that were willing to wait till age 70, they could get as much as $1.2 million in total. So you can see that there's a big difference between taking it at age 62 and age 70. Now, each person's circumstances are unique, so that's something that we probably wanna go over together. How many of you out there have received a social security statement and weren't exactly sure what it said? So here's an example of a typical social security statement. I want you to look at it because many of you probably received this, this in the mail um, at least once each and every year. In case you don't, you can always go to my account, socialsecurity.gov and take a look at it. But there's one little line here in the center you should really focus on. Social Security will replace only about 40% of your annual pre-retirement earnings. That's right, 40%. In some cases, I've heard that it was only designed to make 30%. Um, so what that says is you will need other savings, investments, pensions, or retirement accounts to live comfortably when you retire. So Social Security was not just built to replace all your income. It was only to replace about 40% and you're gonna to have to make up the other 60. Well, that's a little scary. Well, as we go through the three sources of protected income, pensions, Social Security and annuities. Let's talk about annuities. Some of you know what annuities are, some of you don't. So let's go through so we have an idea about what an annuity really is. An annuity is a personal social security-like stream of guaranteed lifetime income from a top-rated insurance company. Um, I always like to think of annuities a little different as well. And so most of you are familiar with the concept of savings accounts. Well, really, in a sense, an annuity is just a savings account at an insurance company. So not a hard deal there. So many annuities um, are very similar to Social Security. Um, so if we're willing to wait a little bit, certainly our annuity payments can raise up. And that's an interesting thing. Uh, many offer inflation protection. Some very interesting things today that um, as I take my distributions in retirement, there are many annuities that are set up to grow with inflation. So as an index grows, so does your payment grow. And once it goes up, it can never go back down. Wasn't that, a, that's a wonderful thing as well. Now, some of you have heard from like Jane Bryant Quinn, or you may have heard it from Dave Ramsey or a couple of the other people that there are some detriments to annuities. And so certainly that's true. It is true that they have some limited liquidity, some surrender charges and some fees. 
Well, well, that's true, but so do CDs. So um, really not much difference there. And um, in fact, today, believe it or not, there's some annuities that actually have no fees. But what's more important about annuities, in my opinion, is the principal protection that they offer, a guarantee of lifetime income, and inflation protection. And I think many of those far outweigh the limited liquidity surrender charges or fees. So as we move forward on our retirement map, um, let's talk about number four, or actually number three, sorry, pardon me. Um, minimizing income taxes. Uh, believe it or not, as we hit Social Security age, um, many of us will pay a lot more in taxes. And I know that's not really something we were planning for. So I want you to pretend um, you're in this situation here. So you're talking to a banker, you're going to get a loan and uh, the banker says, well, I'm ready to give you a loan. And um, I don't know what the interest rate's gonna be. And wow, I just don't know when I'm gonna need the money. So I don't know when you're gonna pay it, have to pay it back. Could be just about any time, could be tomorrow, could be in a couple of years. Um, who of you would sign a contract like that? Well, that's very much like our tax system, if you think about it. You're right. Um, every time there's a new administration, um, they change the tax rate. So I don't know if the tax rate today is going to be the same as the tax rate in the future. And frankly, I don't even know how they're going to calculate the tax in the future. Um, being a CPA for 32 years, uh, um, I've probably seen about three or four different tax systems from Reagan all the way up to our, our current president, Donald Trump. Things change on a dime. So we need to be ready for those. Um, how many of you there thought that income tax rates were low? How many of you thought they were high? Well, the truth of the matter is that income taxes have been around since 1913 and through 1920, believe it, actually 2020, believe it or not, that the average income tax rate is 57.3%. Wow, that's a lot. So if you look at where we are today, um, certainly taxes are, are lower for the moment, but um, you never know if a new administration gets elected and goes into the White House, you never know what might happen to taxes. They could go up, they could go down. So we all have to be very careful with this. So as we hit retirement and think about our taxes, um, many of us will have our house paid off by that time. Certainly that's a great thing. And um, I do recommend you do that if it's possible. So you'll be losing that deduction. And uh, many of us have children and as they go off to school and go off into life, um, we no longer have the child tax exemption, the child tax credit. Um, and many of us who are making qualified contributions, whether they be to a 401k, a 403b, or a 457, um, we're going to lose those because we don't need to contribute to those anymore. So what's going to happen is we start losing that stuff. Well, even if the tax rate doesn't go up, what do we have to worry about? Well, if we no longer get these deductions, the base on which we are taxed definitely goes up. So even the tax rate is lower, you could be paying taxes on a higher base. So that's not always a good thing. So we need to find a method where we can have consistent income over time. So let's talk about the three buckets of money. So certainly most of us know the taxable bucket. That's the one we get from our W-2s and now come every April 15th, those are the ones we certainly have to pay taxes on right away. That can include our W-2, self-employment income, savings, CDs, bonds. And so remember that first day that you got home and you showed your mom and dad your paycheck and they said, ah, I earned a hundred dollars, but they only gave me 65. And that's when you as a parent had to explain to your children, guess what? That has to do with taxes. So Obviously lots of leaks in that bucket. Um, as we move to tax deferred, certainly I like to call this tax postponed. So tax postponed is a really a way of saying that I get to defer the stuff today at an all time low tax rate. 
And so as that money grows, when I pull it out, the government not only taxes me on what I deferred, but the growth inside that of account. So certainly it doesn't have as many leaks in that bucket um, because we don't have to pay taxes immediately, but we do have to pay taxes in the future when we pull that out. The most interesting bucket I feel is one that many of you don't take advantage of. It's called the tax-free bucket. You're right, I said the tax-free bucket. So in the tax-free bucket, we have things like 529 plans. And so certainly those can grow tax-free. And as long as we use them to pay for college, no taxes on them. Unfortunately, if we don't use them to pay for college, guess what? We do pay tax. And the other interesting thing about 529 plans, especially if you've got some kids in college or about to go to college, those count against you on the FAFSA calculation for college aid. So even though tax-free, probably not the best way to save for retirement. We also have these things called Roth IRAs. So we put after-tax money into that. And when we pull it out, we can pull it out tax-free. That's certainly a neat deal. And we also have index universal life insurance. That's another tax-free type of account. So moving forward, so certainly we know about the taxable bucket. We talked about the tax postponed bucket. We have these wonderful things called IRAs. So in 2020, if you were under the age of 50, you could put $6,000 into an IRA. If you were the, over the age of 50, you can put $7,000 in an IRA. Now these are certainly very tax efficient, but if you're one of those lucky people that makes more than $206,000 a year, you got it. You're not even eligible to put money in it. So sometimes for those that need it the most, they can't take advantage of the tax efficient bucket, at least in terms of, you got it, Roth IRAs. The other thing that we can look at is what's called the index universal life insurance. So IUL is just simply a Roth like account with a unique combination of tax deferred growth, tax free distribution and tax free wealth transfer. I know what most of you are thinking, life insurance, isn't that one of those things that only pays off when I die? Well, many of you don't know the living benefits of life insurance, so you're just gonna have to trust me on that one. So let's talk about income in America. So we have the top 25% and we have the bottom 75%. So if I'm a financial guru on TV or the radio, which group do you think I'm gonna concentrate on? You know, if I want great ratings on my television show, I want great ratings on my radio show, or I want to sell lots of books and products, you got it. I'm gonna concentrate on the bigger group because that's where the most things can happen for us. But what about us on the top 25%? Hmm, so anybody recognize her? Certainly you do, her name's Susie Orman. She's been on TV and radio for years, written lots of books. And so because of the 75%, it's made her very wealthy. But as we move forward, did you realize that the top 25% pay 86% of the taxes? That's right, 86%. Do you know what it takes you to qualify for the top 25%? $83,682. Well, so that may seem a big number to some of you. It may seem a small number to others. But if we think about it, the government calls this an uncommon amount of income. And so certainly it would be important us, to us to seek alternative financial strategies. So as we move forward, Let's talk about invest. So certainly many of you have money in the stock market, you have money in mutual funds and bonds and stuff like that. So let's look at the average stock market returns over the last 30 years. So we have the S&P 500 over a 30 year period, it's returned 10%. Um, over a 10 year period, it's earned 13.1%. Um, the period ending 28, December 31st, 2018, well, yeah, it did lose a little bit, 
But what I really want you to focus on is look at what happened to the average investor. So while it's true the market earned 10%, why did the average investor only earn 4.1%? Um, that's something you should really think about. So I always heard in the stock market, you should buy low and you should sell high. But many of you get into this emotionalistic funk when it comes to investing in stocks. And so when the market goes really high, you know, I put more money in. And as the market starts to slide, I get nervous and I pull money out. Um, but the thing is the market goes up and it goes down on a regular basis. So how do we protect ourselves from all of the ups and downs? So as we're looking at the market over time, um, this comes from a really famous chart called the Ibbotson chart. Um, if we look at the stock market over time, certainly there's no bl more blues than there are reds. And so the blues are the up years, the reds are the down years. Um, so we can see that there's been quite a few of them. Um, you know, we've been in a very long bull market, 10.8 uh, years, who would have expected that? But the question is not if, but how many times will the stock market drop during your retirement? Well, none of us really know. Um, it could be a dozen times, it could be five times. But the point is we need to protect for the future. We need to have money there whether the stock market goes up or whether the stock market goes down. That's really important so that as we're spending in retirement, we can be confident in the way that we spend regardless of what's happening in the world. So lastly, we've gone through identify, we've organized our financial drawer, shown you how you can protect your money, how you can reduce your income taxes. Certainly there are safer ways to invest money. And we've showed how having emotion when it comes to investing can work against us. So then let's talk about managing our money. How do we do that? So the nice thing is, as life changes, so does your plan you have for your retirement. So some of you may want to pay for a wedding. You may want to start your own business. Um, you may want to pay for children or grandkids college. Or some of you, unfortunately, um, will get hurt and you'll be at, have to retire before you're supposed to. And certainly we want to plan for all of those scenarios. So what we like to do here at Rulon Financial is perform annual performance reviews. Um, we will come up with an income plan summary, an overall per, uh, performance review each year, and we will show you illustrated versus your actual results. And we will also help you perform what's called a needs assessment checklist. Remember, that's that checklist that talks about what are our real needs when it comes to retirement. So to summarize what we discussed today, we discussed how the current retirement income model is broken. No question about that since most pensions are gone. I believe that the only way for a successful retirement is through an income plan that protects you from the four key risks. Remember that? Longevity, stock market risk, income taxes, and inflation. The retirement income framework is a five-step roadmap that helps you spend confidently in retirement. Any of you recognize this? Although many of us are not flying at the moment, we certainly recognize the inside of an airplane cabin. Cabin. Um, pretend the captain came on. He said, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. On behalf of the flight crew, let me welcome you aboard. We should touch down in Dallas at 5 p.m. local time. I say should because we will be experiencing some turbulence along the way. Turbulence 
and we only had a 20% chance of landing safely in Dallas. How many of you would stay on that plane? I'm guessing not one of you. And yet many of you treat your retirement in the same way. Wouldn't it be nice to know what our probability was for living a successful retirement? So what we like to do, and you know, I've done this hundreds of times, is we like to prepare what's called a retirement income shortfall analysis. This is a way of giving you an idea or a report card of where you are today and where you might be in the future. Wouldn't it be nice to know that you are on the right road towards retirement? So we can kind of give you a probability of how your retirement would be. You'd get a, what's called a retirement success score. Um, that's kind of like your probability of living successful in retirement. We'll certainly give you a yearly breakdown of your account withdrawals and notification if your income might come short. And we'll also give you some recommendations to enhance your score. So let me give you a couple of examples here. Scenario number one, this is a couple nearing retirement. So this couple, male age 55, female age 52, um, they have a current income of 150,000. They have a desired retirement income of 120,000. And they have investable assets of a million and they currently make $30,000 $30, in yearly contributions. Now, I recognize this is not everybody. So remember, this is just an example. But this is an example of this couple. And let me show you what we can do for them. So under their current scenario, Social Security was their only protected income source. So we recommended that they reposition 300,000 of their investable assets into deferred fixed annuity. Our second recommendation is, uh, was that um, they had all of their assets in the taxable bucket and tax deferred bucket, and they didn't even have any tax free sources. Remember that last bucket we were talking about? So we suggested that they redirect the 30,000 of annual savings into an index universal life insurance policy. So last thing is, they had all of their savings exposed to stock market volatility. So we recommended they go into some protected income sources that have been established to cover their essential expenses. So this is what happened to this particular couple. When they first came to see us, they had a 41% chance of living a successful retirement. In fact, if they had lived another 10 years, that probability would have gone down to 26%. That's a little scary and they only had 22% protected income or mailbox money. And they had some retirement assets left over, but not as much as they wanted. So with our recommended strategies, uh, they were able to raise the probability of a successful retirement to 95%, um, even if they lived an extra 10 years. And remember we talked about a married couple at least one of you has a 50% chance of living into your 90s. So we changed their protected income to 82%. And you know, they actually had the ability to leave a legacy if they wanted to, and um, their assets could grow. So they were, believe me, they were absolutely ecstatic. Um, scenario number two, we call this the retirement red zone. So these are people that are right at the cusp of retirement. Um, when they came to us, they had a 32% probability of living a successful retirement. In fact, if they lived another 10 years, that would have gone down to 21%. Um, their protected income was 45%. And believe it or not, that was just from Social Security. And they didn't have any assets remaining at the end. Um, after making the appropriate recommendations to where they are, um, we were actually able to raise the probability of living a successful retirement to 94%. And if they left an extra 10 years, that probability actually went up to 96%. And we were actually able to raise their protected income to 75%. And they had even had some assets remaining at the end 
um, which they could pass on to the next generation if they chose to. This last example is one that's really near and dear to my heart. Um, how many of you know a widow or a widower um, who's still able to drive and some of their friends are not and they're willing to take them uh, back and forth to the doctor or help them get some medicine or maybe they're taking care of a sick uncle or mom and dad and they really just didn't have a lot of opportunity to save when it came to retirement. And so they really only had a 50% probability of living a successful retirement. And you know, you know them, they don't wanna be burdened to their children or their brothers and sisters. And um, they had protected income of 49% and um, assets remaining of 221, 930. Um, certainly a sad case. And because they didn't wanna be taking care of others, we made a couple recommendations for them. Um, after those recommendations, um, she actually lived a fabulous retirement. In fact, to this day, she's still going and going strong and says, thank you, thank you, thank you, Scott. Um, I literally talk to her a few times a year, check in and see how she's doing. Um, we were able to raise her mailbox money and protected income to 88%. And believe it or not, because she had that protected income, she was actually able to grow her remaining assets and was able to leave some money to others because that's something that she had always wanted to do. So let me give you another real life case. Um, had a client, um, he had worked for a local radio station for many years. And in this case, um, his wife was about 10 years younger than he was. And um, when he was about to retire, um, Dick came in and with his wife, Jane, and we sat down and we talked about um, how he might live a successful retirement. And so he was about to apply for social security and he brought in his 401k statement. So when we looked at his 401k statement, it read $130,000. And so I asked Dick, well, how much money do you need each and every year to survive? And he said, well, you know, in addition to my social security, I need an extra 30,000. And so as we looked at Dick's um, 401k plan, I said, wow, an extra 30,000 per year, huh? Um, your money will be gone literally in five years. Um, so what we did is we actually set up a plan for, for Dick and Jane in this instance. And actually they still come in to see me every year during tax time. and was able to find them a high quality annuity that will actually provide them payments until um, Dick reaches the age of 100. It's, what an exciting thing. Um, I mean, it's so nice when you get to help somebody and get them in the road in the right way. I mean, it's one of the few times in life when you can really have satisfaction that you've done things the right way and people are happy and confident as they live into their retirement. So again, what we can provide you is something called the Retirement Income Shortfall Analysis. Um, you should also know there's absolutely no obligation. Um, this is really something that helps you um, as you go into retirement. And so we'll conduct a 60-minute exploratory meeting. We'll gather your latest account statements. We'll calculate your protected income number. We'll complete the client asset assessment form and we'll review your analysis in a follow-up meeting. So, and as an extra bonus, because it's not always easy to see what our essentials are in retirement, um, we've actually put together a retirement lifestyle worksheet. In fact, today, believe it or not, I just sent out five of these um, because there were people that really didn't know where they were spending their money. Um, so we wanted to get down and really take a look so that when we did their retirement planning, um, we'd have them on the right track. So it's a great way to use this worksheet to estimate retirement expenses and calculate that protected income number. So take back of your control of your retirement now. Uh, we'll give you a retirement income shortfall analysis to help you along your journey. So think of it as a roadmap as you move towards retirement. We'll give you the retirement lifestyle worksheet so you can certainly work out what your essential expenses are as you head towards retirement. 
Um, many of you will ask the following questions. Well, what if I already work with an advisor? No problem, I know many people do. Um, so here's an interesting thing. We could produce this report for you and just to independently compare this to what your advisors put together for you. If your advisor is doing a great job, wonderful. But it is not nice to get a report card and get an idea that you're headed in the right direction. Well, that's certainly exciting. Oh, here's the other thing. And I know many people are nervous coming to see a person for the first time. We're always worried about, will I be sold something? So we dig in our heels when we come to see somebody. Um, but this is not really about selling something to somebody. This is more about you developing a roadmap for your retirement and the direction that you'll head in. So there's absolutely no obligation. So we're not gonna to try to sell you something at the interview. We certainly can make some recommendations when your report comes out, but really the rest is up to you. So don't worry about filling this out. Um, I've met with hundreds and thousands of, of people over time and let's see how we can help your retirement so you can pay, take back control. Here's another thing that many people worry about. How much in savings do I need to have? Uh, many of you have kind of the conception that to go see a financial advisor or a financial consultant, you need to have millions or thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Absolutely not true. Um, I've helped lots of people. In fact, um, just yesterday I was happy helping a lady um, out in Sun City. Um, she had basically less than $100,000 in savings for her retirement. Um, so what we did is we just put together a plan which could help her um, get along the right path for retirement. She was recently widowed. Um, I think she's gonna get some money from some life insurance coming up. Um, but it's really not a matter of savings. We like to help all people. And so what I would tell you is most of my clients that I've served over the last 32 years, most of them today are somewhere between the age of 50 and 70. And, you know, many of you only retire once, but I like to tell people that I have helped people retire hundreds of times. So not as big a deal to me, but it's a nervous time. I get that. Um, but having some good planning so you can have some confidence when you hit retirement you know what, that's just a remarkable and a priceless thing. So I definitely recommend you come to see that. So for any of you that wanna come in, or certainly we can do a Zoom meeting or a phone call, um, please feel free to either give a call to my office at 602-824-2299 or send us an email at scott and Rulon, at Rulon Financial, and we can certainly get this process started. But my heart of hearts at the end, I want you to all be like this man who's uh, standing on the edge, of this, the edge of this beautiful green valley saying, wow, wouldn't it really be nice to have some peace of mind so that I can live a peaceful, safe, and secure and confident retirement. And the other thing is, if we're looking at the other picture, so certainly we can see a pile of silver coins but I want you all to have enough money so that you can spend confidently month after month after month. You know, we've helped hundreds of people do this and frankly, we've been very successful at it. And we're really happy to help all of you. I have a wonderful team here who's helped hundreds of people and I look forward to helping you if you need the help. So remember, Take back control of your retirement now. And we will provide you a retirement income shortfall analysis and a retirement lifestyle worksheet. Um, I think these will help all of you to give you a great grade report of where you are today and see where you can go in the future. And so I would be very happy to help all of you that need my help. So please feel free to give us a call. You can see my name and you can see my phone number and you can see my email address. 
Um, I have a wonderful lady who answers the, the telephones when you call. Um, Sherry's been with me for pretty close to 13 years now. Um, we have a really solid team here of about five people who have helped hundreds of people over the years. Um, if you need help, I'm here to help you and lead you in the right direction. Um, thank you so much for attending tonight. I know that your time is valuable and we appreciate every minute you spent here. Uh, I'm gonna leave the slide up for a couple extra minutes um, in case you need to write some stuff down, but please give us a call when you're ready. Um, thank you so much and have a good evening. Um, you know, anybody have any questions at this point? Um, if you do and you wanna put them in the question and answer box, I'd be certainly happy to answer a couple questions if you got them. I know someone raised their hand earlier tonight. Um, I just like to get through the presentation first because uh, people's time is valuable. So I'll wait a minute or two if you wanna answer. Um, or ask a question and we'll get there. So it looks like no questions tonight. Um, Y'all have a pleasant night's sleep. You have a wonderful Friday and enjoy the sunny weather now that the temperature's starting to go down. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you and good night.